What's up guys, Shane Starnes here. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite products that I've ever reviewed, the Synology DS1019 Plus. Big shout outs to them for sending it out for review and sponsoring this video. I've been running this channel for about seven to eight years and one issue that I always run into is a lack of storage. So the 128 SSD on my MacBook, it ran out years ago and I've even went out and purchased uh, one terabyte, 250 gigabyte SSDs that are portable. Those have all run out of storage. And so what I end up having to do is I just end up having to delete my videos and I just hope that YouTube will always be around and I'll always have a backup of my videos on that platform. Synology was generous enough to send out 48 terabytes of storage to go along with the DS1019 Plus, so I'm never going to run out of storage. We're gonna take a deep dive into this. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this is the Disk Station 1019 Plus. This is a five bay storage option, and so you can have five different hard drives in here. On the front, you've got access to those bays. Of course, you have your light array to show you what is working. There's a USB port and a power button up front. If we turn it around to the back, you'll find your network ports, your power port, and another uh, USB port. Synology did send four 14 terabyte hard drives. This should be plenty enough storage to back up my YouTube videos even when I decide to start shooting in 4K. And it'll still leave me room to spare for all of my personal files, you know, my DVDs, Blu-rays, and family files. You can put it anywhere where you have a network connection. Uh, for me, that's going to be right here next to my router. But all I have to do is plug in my network port and my power. So you don't have to have this set up next to your router. But if it's the only way to access a network port, then yeah, next to your router will do. All right, and then once you've got it all plugged in, you'll just press the power button until it powers up. Give it about five minutes to boot up and then you can go and take care of the software side of the install. So I recently switched over to a new office and everything's kind of been a mess. So setting the NAS up on my computer wasn't really an option. Luckily they have the DS Finder app. You can set this up super easy directly from your cell phone, which is what we're gonna do now. So you'll just launch the DS Finder. We're gonna set up a new NAS. We'll go ahead and log into my account that I already have. All right, so it's asking us to go ahead and insert our drives into the device, which we've already done. Make sure your mobile device and NAS are connected to the same router, and we've already hardwired ours into the router. Power on your NAS and wait until you see the status indicator flash orange, or you hear a beeping sound. And then we're gonna go ahead and search for our NAS. All right, so here's the disk station. We'll go ahead and click it and continue. All right, so we're gonna set up our account and our password here. Then we'll click create. Okay, you can choose to send your statistical information or not. Now you can start managing your disk station with DS Finder. This is asked for your file server. We recommend that you install Drive to enjoy a convenient management solution. All right, and so now we have installed our NAS system and it is ready to be used. One thing that's great about Synology is they have this incredible suite of apps so that you can take full advantage of your disk station directly from your mobile device. You don't actually have to have a high powered PC or laptop. You can do everything directly from your phone, which is awesome. If I jump into this DS file application, this is pretty incredible because you can not only access all the files on your NAS from any mobile device, but you can also set up your mobile device to automatically back up uh, your photos. So to do that, all you have to do is jump into the menu, go to photo backup, enable photo backup. So you may be familiar with like Google Photos. You can enable most Android devices to automatically back up your photos to the cloud. Google Photos is pretty cool because they do give you unlimited high quality photo storage. But if you have the disk station, you can get unlimited full quality backups of all of your photos, which is pretty incredible because that's also a more secure private way of backing up the photos on your phone as you're not having to pump them out into a cloud system. <clears throat> you're actually able to store all those photos on your personal hard drive. So all you have to do here is click enable photo backup and you'll go ahead and log in to your account. 
You can choose a destination folder of where you want those to show up. For now, I'll just go to the Photos app. You can choose which folders to back up here, uh, only the DCIM folder, all folders, or you can custom select the folders that you want. I'll just go with the DCM only or the DCIM only. You can back up new photos only, or you can back up all your existing photos plus new photos. I'll just go with new photos. There's an option on here to upload when you're on Wi-Fi only. You can upload photos only. So if there are some videos in that folder, it won't upload those videos. If you leave that unchecked, it'll grab both the photos and the videos, and then you can keep the original file name. I'll go ahead and select done. All right, so it is currently backing up the photos on my phone. So I have this enabled on my Note 10, and as you can see, it grabbed all of my Note 10 photos and videos, and they're stored safely on my disk station. Next up, we'll take a quick look at the DS Audio app. So this is an application that allows you to stream your own music files from your NAS directly to your phone, uh, no matter where in the world you happen to be. So Currently, I've got my Post Malone and Halsey backed up here to my NAS, and I can access these from anywhere. One thing that I love about this application is that it automatically organizes all of your music, so I can go into albums, and it'll find the albums from which the music comes from. I can go to artist and find my music that way. I can go over to folders, and if I have my music in specific folders, it will find it that way. It also adds the music art automatically. I don't have to do that by myself. It does that automatically. You can easily set up your own playlist here and then there's some uh, random playlist and automatically generated playlist that will play here as well. If you already have hundreds of CDs and thousands of music files, you may not find it necessary to subscribe to a service like Amazon Music or YouTube Music if you already have your own music, why not just store that on your NAS and stream it from anywhere from any device? DS Video is similar to DS Audio, except this is where we're going to access all of our movies and TV shows, our video files that are on our NAS. So as you can see here, I've got Spider-Man, I've got all the Star Wars movies. I've been able to back those up and store those on my NAS and I can watch those videos on my phone from anywhere. These even stream incredibly well over mobile networks. One thing that I love about this is when you feed your videos into the DS Video application, it's going to automatically generate the video art that goes along with the files. I didn't have to go through and find the video covers for these. They were automatically downloaded and added as I added the videos. We've got the same thing here for TV shows. It will actually organize these into seasons. If there's multiple seasons of the particular TV show, it will actually organize those seasons for you and give you a list of all the episodes. One thing that I love about DS Video is you can go ahead and launch the video um, right here on your phone and you can play it on your phone. But then there's also options to cast the videos to like an Nvidia Shield. I've got an Nvidia Shield or if you have a smart TV like I have an LG smart TV, if it recognizes that TV on the network, you can cast that directly to your smart TV. Another thing that's included with DS Video that I haven't had a chance to play with myself is TV recording. So if you have a compatible USB DTV dongle and you have something like HD Home Run, you can actually record live TV so you can DVR directly onto your NAS so that you can watch those TV shows later in your DS Video app. I thought that was a pretty cool feature. Synology also provides awesome collaborative tools. So if you work in an office and you're constantly having to collaborate on certain files or documents and you find yourself working a lot on devices like an iPad or a Galaxy Note 10 Plus, an application like Synology Drive could come in handy. So I actually do collaborate on some different files with my church. I help to work on the announcements. So Synology Drive is a great and private way for me to share those files with my coworkers so we can collaborate and finish those projects in a timely manner. So if I go to my drive, just for an example, here are some announcements that we've been working on and I can edit this and then send it back to my media director they can make some edits and send it back to me until we finish the project. Another thing that I love about the disk station 
And just the idea of a hybrid cloud is that all of my data stays my private data. So yes, we can rely on applications like Google Drive and Box to store our data in the cloud. But when we do that, we're theoretically giving third parties access to all of our data. When you sync up to Google Drive, Google now has access to your photos, videos, and all of your documents. For more safety and security, converting to something like a disk station and putting all of your files on a NAS will make those more private and secure. And for even that extra measurement of security and for that peace of mind, you can even encrypt your data that is held on your NAS, which is pretty incredible. So as a general rule of thumb, you should have at least three copies of your data. Two of those should be on different media. So maybe one on your NAS and one stored locally on your PC or your cell phone. And then you should also have at least one backup offsite. So if you had access to another NAS at your friend's house, you could back up on that particular NAS. Of course, it could be encrypted to where they couldn't access it. You could store one of your friend's backups on your NAS. It could also be encrypted to where you couldn't access their information. Or you could use a service like uh, Google One or the Google Drive in order to have that offsite backup. If we launch DS Cloud, it's going to automatically walk us through uh, the backup process. So we'll just select the home folder. We'll select internal storage. So it's going to back up our internal storage, everything on our phone. You can choose the maximum file size. You can choose the sync direction. You can choose every kind of file format that you would like to be synced. And then you can choose to sync on Wi-Fi only or to even sync when you're away from the home on cellular reception. All right, so now we are currently running uh, DS Cloud. It is backing my phone up to my NAS. So it's getting everything on my phone. So if something were to happen to this phone and say I had to replace it with a warranty replacement, I could easily just go and grab my backup from my NAS and restore those files on my new phone. So big shout outs once again to Synology for sending out this network attached storage. I'll be sure to include links in the description of where you can grab one for yourself. That about wraps it up for this video. I'll be covering how to set up a Plex media server on the NAS in a future video, so be sure that you're subscribed for that. Thanks guys for watching, be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.